Hello everyone, this is Julia. Thank you so much for joining me on my craft room adventures. Today I'm super thrilled to share my very first project as a Heavy Doodle video team member with you. From now on there will be a new video every month featuring Heavy Doodle products and I'm just so excited. For my first project I made an interactive swing shadow box card and for this one I started by stamping out all of my images onto perfect coloring paper. And the stamp sets I'm using are Yappy Happy Mail, the little mailbox, and of course the letters. And the monkeys and the other accessories are from Chimply the Best, which is just such a fun name. And I'm using my Copic markers to color them in. I started with R89 as my darkest shade. Then I'm blending that out with R27. And then going in with R24. And I wanted more of an orangey red shade for my mailbox. I didn't want it to be too dark red. So I'm using a lot of the R24. And I'm blending that out with R22. And there's quite a big step from the R22 to the R24. So I'm going over the edges quite a few times to make sure they blend well. I'm coloring in the inside of the mailbox a bit darker. Then I'm blending out the R22 with the R21. Again, going over everything with the R22 and the R24 just to get a smooth transition. Then again with the R21. For my monkeys, I'm going in with E. 37 on the main parts of the body, just laying down my shadows. And then I'm blending that out with E35. Then going in with E33, just to blend out the E35, just pulling the color a bit further in. I wanted to keep the monkeys fairly light, so I'm not using super dark shades. But I did want a bit more contrast in the very darkest areas, so I'm also bringing in the E39, which actually isn't as dark as some of the other, like the E49, for example, that's like a really dark brown. The E39 is quite light compared. Then I'm again blending that out with E35, skipping the E37 at this point because I didn't want it to be too dark. Then again, blending out everything together with the E31 as my lightest shade. Just going over everything to make sure it's blended nicely. I already removed the cap, but this is still the E31. I just wasn't quite happy with the blend just yet. Then I'm also using the E31 as my lightest shade for the tummy and the face. I'm bringing in some blush. I'm using R21 for that. I always like to add my blush first. Then I can blend it out with the lightest color, which in this case is E30. Then for the leaves, I'm using G29 as my darkest shade. Then going in with G17. Just blending that out slightly. Then with G02. And then blending that out with G00. For the letters, I used the same red shades as I did for the mailbox, and now I'm just using the N3, N0, and the colorless blender to give it a bit, a bit of shading. 
Then for my main card piece, I used the big shadow box die and I die cut it twice, one with a window and one without from Bristol Smooth cardstock. And now I'm using uh, Cracked Pistachio and Evergreen Bow Distress Oxide to ink blend the outside. I'm just adding a, quite a bit of ink on the edges with, with the Evergreen Bow and then I'm blending that out with the Cracked Pistachio. I just wanted a basic green blend for the outside. Just blending the colors back and forth with my blending sponges. And I did the same thing for the other side. Now I'm going to blend the inside of my shadow box. I'm also using cracked pistachio for that. I'm just laying down a basic coat of color. And now I'm using the unbelievable stencil. And again, I'm using the evergreen bow and I'm also using pine needles to add a bit more shading to those beautiful leaves. Just adding a bit of the pine needles in the center of the leaves with my dark green brush. And then I'm using my uh, lighter green brush just to blend that out so that I have a nice fade on the leaves. Did the same thing on both sides and now I'm using some, uh, some pine needles just to add more splatters. I'm going in with the same colors uh, on the leaves that I die cut. Those are the Amazonian leaves. And again, I'm going in with uh, cracked pistachio, evergreen bow and pine needles. Just using some uh, finger daubers. Just to add a little bit of shading and I used the, some tape on the back of my die cuts to keep them in place because I always find that it's easiest to die cut this way. I die cut two of the hills from the big shadow box die set and I'm ink blending one of them and half of them with tea dye distress oxide. As you can see I ink blend at the bottom of the second one with a cracked pistachio and the reason for that is for my swing mechanism I do need a little shelf at the top of my box so I'm just using my paper trimmer to trim off the green part so that I have three shelves, two for the bottom and one for the top. And now I'm just using some gathered twigs distress oxide to add splatters. Now I'm using the sending word heavy cut and I'm using my heavy doodle mini die cutting machine to cut that out which just has the perfect size for that. I added some tape to the back of my die cut to keep it inside the uh, the paper piece so that I have an easier time ink blending and now I'm using abandoned coral and festive berries to add some uh, ink blending and I made sure to make the bottom of the letters a bit darker so that there's a nice fade. Now for my swing mechanism I'm using a, a crocodile corner rounder but you could also do this with scissors because I just find that it gives a nicer edge so that I have a round piece of acetate. Uh, this is actually uh, just a piece of lamination foil that I just ran through without paper in the middle because it's a lot sturdier than the acetate I have. And then I'm using a, a six millimeter hole punch and I just added a little hole at the top. And then I'm using a slider bead from MFT and it fits perfectly inside this kind of a hole punch. And I also just by hand cut a little circle that's bigger than my slider bead just to seal off the mechanism. Now to assemble my shadow box, I'm just folding along the score line that the die creates, just using a Teflon bone folder to reinforce my score lines. And I also added some score tape to the outside flaps of my box pieces. Then I'm just lining up my pieces, removing the backing paper of my score tape and just pressing them together. Then it's time to add my shelves. I'm using the lower one at the front, then the bigger one just behind that and also adding the top shelf more to the, the front third of the box. Then I'm folding them over, making sure to line them up with the edge of the box, removing the additional layers of, fo uh, of score tape and just folding the right side of the card onto them. And then I just need to remove the last piece of tape and fold the card onto that. 
and this forms our box. And now we have a top shelf and two bottom shelves to add our images. I added my little swing mechanism to the bottom, uh, to the back of my monkey, and I added score tape to the slider beat. Then I'm just hanging the little monkey with the acetate strip on my slider bead, removing the backing paper of the score tape on the back, and just adding my little circle to seal the mechanism shut. Now I'm just making sure that my monkey moves around. Also, of course, adding a little envelope because he's swinging to the mailbox to deliver some happy mail. Then I'm also adding an envelope to my second monkey using the Heavy Doodle Liquid Glue, Gluebird, which I think is just so cute. I really wanted to have my swinging monkey uh, like swing from those leaves, but I realized that if I just glued them to the same shelf, it would get in the way of my swing mechanism. So I just off camera cut a second shelf, uh, just using the same die adding the score tape and also the same uh, cracked pistachio ink. And now I'm just adding it into the box. You can al always add them later. I always find that it's easiest to do it while you're assembling the card, but you can certainly add them in later as well. It works just as well. And now it looks like the monkey is swinging from those leaves. Then I'm also adding my second monkey on the right edge of my shadow box so that he's in front of the mailbox. And I'm just gluing down the bottom of the mailbox, just using some reverse tweezers to hold it in place. Adding some leaves to the back. And since this uh, stamp isn't quite long enough to cover, cover the entire back of the shadow box, I just added one of the leaf die cuts to cover the edge that isn't long enough so that it's like a nice finishing touch there. Then I'm adding liquid glue to my word die cut and I'm just curving it slightly along the top edge. And then it's time to stamp the second part of my sentiment, which is from the Yappy Happy Mail. And I'm just using some black cardstock and I'm heat embossing that in white. The embossing powder I'm using is the Wow Opaque Bright White in Super Fine. And I'm just using my heat gun to heat set it and I just cut it into a small strip. Then I'm using some of the leaves just around the bottom edge of my shadow box, just sprinkling them around with liquid glue. And then I'm also gluing down the second part of my sentiment. I added some gel pen details on my images off camera. And here you can see the little monkey just swinging in the back of the box. From this angle, it's kind of hard to do because it's meant to be like standing up and I'm having it like on the back, but it's working really nicely. And just the swinging monkey is just the cutest thing. And that finishes off my card for today. I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more crafty videos. And I hope I see you again next time. Until then, have a wonderful day. Bye!